Okay, this is Into the Breach. This is a game from the FDL guys that I've been playing for uh, more than a year now <laughs> because uh, it's been nearly done for a year, I've got to say. I played it a year ago and it was really good then. Um, but more impressively, I've been playing it ever since and uh, I still want to play it, so I am. Uh, you play as three mechs fighting kaiju, um, big alien bugs. Uh, Vec, actually, they're called here. Um, and normally you just have these guys, but as you play, you unlock new squads. And so I will play as a different squad. I think I might play as the Rusting Hulks. Um, you can see these little medals here, the, the two, three, four. If I have any of those, it means I completed the game as that squad. Um, and so Blitzkrieg and Rusting Hulks, it looks like I never have. Um, Rusting Hulks I actually have, but it was before the achievement system was in, I think. Um, which is arguably meaningless because the balance has changed a lot since then. Uh, Blitzkrieg, maybe I never have. They have this one where his lightning chains to all adjacent targets, and what always happens to me is I can't use him at all because the chain would kill friendly targets. <laughs> so Rusting Hulks are also difficult because they work mostly through smoke. So I've got this jet mech who can jump over the people and, and uh, put smoke on them. Only does one damage. Uh, this rocket thing does two damage, which is great, and it pushes them, which is usually great. <laughs> um, and this pulse mech just pushes people back, which is not that useful <laughs> and so they have like one damage dealer um and this is like doing one damage and smoke is great smoke prevents the enemy from attacking um but the issue is that if you can't jump over them you can't do it at all so you need space to use this and i just often find there just isn't any space to use him but i will give them a go um my the pilot i'm starting with is a guy who gives armored to the um unit that he pilots. So you have mechs and then you have pilots as well. Uh, we'll start on normal. You can choose which island to start with, it doesn't matter too much. Um, I Maybe I'll go with this. Hmm. This desert one is easier for smoke guys because uh, sand dunes kick up dust whenever they hit damage, so even if you don't create um, smoke, it helps you anyway. Because when you're playing as a smoke guy, smoke hurts the enemy as well, because they have uh, this guy has a passive ability that means smoke hurts enemies. Um, it doesn't hurt us, but it does prevent us from firing, so it's also something we have to watch out for. Um, yeah, let's do desert first. So, uh, this is just flavor text telling you that... Um, telling you nothing, actually. <laughs> uh, and then you've got to choose which thing you attack, and the stars are reputation, and the power bolts are your grid. Your grid is basically your health. When you run out of that, you die, and it's persistent across all missions. Um, so repairing a bit of the grid uh, could be quite good, but actually rep is more important because um, you get to spend that at the end of the chapter, and one of the things you can spend it on is to get grid power. So if you don't need grid power right now, rep is better to go for, because at worst you can transform it back into power anyway, and at best you can buy new weapons, which is what I really care about. So I'll probably do one of these two rep things. Um, this one doesn't seem to matter actually too much which one of these I do, because uh, either way I'll probably get to do this one, which is the only other important one. Uh, so I might even do this one first. Go defend the earth mover, take less than three grid damage. Every mission you've got these bonus objectives. Your primary objective is just to survive um, and protect the city, um, and all you have to do is just hold out for five turns. So in this one, I've also got to protect this, protect this, and take less than three grid damage, which is an easy bonus objective because you're trying to protect uh, from grid damage anyway. Grid damage is when a building gets damaged, um, and all buildings kind of counters uh, detract from your health when they get attacked. So, oh, annoyingly, they've got armor. This guy gives armor to the um, to yeah. They don't call it armor, but it is armor. Um, So, where do I want to put my jet guy? Uh, I wanted to be able to jump over things, but that's probably won't be a problem. Um, what I mostly need is to try and block off the VEC from getting at anything other than these two buildings. So if I just put everyone in these gaps, then there's no way for the VEC to get past us, because they can't move through enemy units. Why is that guy's health highlighted? Oh, just because I didn't click, I guess.
Let's show these Vec how Detritus takes out the trash. Who is Detritus? Is that me? <laughs> I thought I was the rusting hulks. Maybe Detritus is the the company that owns this island? Um, Alright, so this guy's going to attack. The great thing about Into the Breach is it tells you what the enemy's going to do. And so each turn is like a little puzzle to figure out how you stop them from doing that. Like, he's going to attack this building, but he hasn't attacked it yet. That webbing is kind of irrelevant. If that was uh, on a mech, it means the mech can't move, but it's on a building, and buildings aren't trying to move. <laughs> um, so, uh, this pulse guy, he could go over here and push this guy out of the way, and then he wouldn't be attacking the building. That's quite nice. Um, our main obstacle, really, is just that they have this armor, so they're going to take one less damage. And so, um, this guy, his thing pushes back, right? So... If he, was over, if he went over here, he could hit this guy and knock him back as well. Uh, like I say, the Pulse guy could do that. And actually, the unique thing about my rocket mech is that he could kill the Scion. The Scion's the one that's giving everyone armor, so I might want to do that just to get rid of the armor. But I want to check first, will I still be able to, to prevent both these instances of damage? I think Pulse guy moves over here, pushes this guy out of the way, and then Jet mech can come down here... And because this space will be empty then, he can jump over. Boy, I hope you can see my cursor. This is going to make no sense. <laughs> he can come to where the scorpion was and jump over the beetle. Um, and in doing so, he'll put smoke on him. It won't kill him, but it, actually it will kill him. Um, but the smoke will stop his attack anyway. Uh, and then at the end of the turn, the, the smoke damage will finish him off. I think that's the thing to do. So as long as the only thing I should just uh, wasn't in that plan is when I hit this guy, it's also going to push him. And just want to check there's nothing good there that he crashes into, and there isn't, so that's good. So, I kill the Scion first. Um, Pulse Mech is going to push this Scorpion out of the way, so that he's no longer damaging the thing. Um, luckily, that webbing doesn't carry with him, or that would um, uh, that would have webbed the Jet Mech. And then Jet Mech. So Jet Mech actually could go here and jump over him there. That'd be fine, or it'll work. And they'll end up down there, next to the where the enemy's going to spawn next. If I wanted, I could actually move him uh, all the way down here and jump backwards over this guy, um, which would still kill him and leave me... Actually, that's better, because it leaves me blocking this building. I think I'm going to do that. So damage and smoke. This guy's totally unharmed. We're going to have to deal with him later. But we got rid of the Scion, and this guy's going to die from the electric smoke. You can actually see, this is a good tip for when you start playing, is uh, use this attack order thing. You can mouse over it and see what order everything's going to happen in. And so because Storm Smoke is going to happen before the enemy actions, that's going to take one health off him, he's going to die, so he never gets to do his action. So his actions are relevant. As it happens, I've stopped his action as well. So it doesn't matter that much this turn, but sometimes that's super important. Okay, I'm happy with that. There's an upgrade for this jet guy that means he can jump two spaces. And that's going to be one of my first priorities to try and get that upgrade because um, that just increases the number of situations in which he's at all useful. <laughs> the thing that sucks is when he just can't do anything. And in fact, in this situation, he might not be able to do anything unless we save him. Okay. So what's what problems we've got are this building's under threat. Uh, this building's under threat from over there. Jesus Christ. Um, and my jet is under threat. Jet being under threat? Ah! He's actually kind of not. Because he's got the... Ar this is... Uh, I put the armoured guy in the jet. So the jet has armour, which means he doesn't... He reduces all damage he takes by one. This guy's only going to do one damage, so he's actually going to take zero, so he's not in any danger at all. So I don't need to save him. Um, I do need to uh, prevent both of these bits of damage. Uh, oh, I can do something neat here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. So, Repulse Mech can go behind this guy and then he can push him uh, into this area and that's cool because that's where an enemy's going to spawn and if there's something on it the enemy tries to spawn and can't and it damages whatever it is blocking it so it'll damage him it won't kill him but it'll damage him um, my most valuable piece really is this guy because he can do two damage so he can finish things off in fact oh shit okay I know what I'm going to do and I'm, I'm changing my plan I'm going to move him here He's going to hit this scorpion for two damage and push him onto the, this spawn, which is going to both block the spawn and kill the scorpion, because it'll only be in one health then. And that frees up the jet, who can take care of this guy. Originally, I was going to have the... I was thinking the rocket mech should probably take out this one, because he can kill him in one hit. But actually, so can the jet. 
and even though the jet's not in danger, it's worth doing this, I think. Oh yeah, that rocket mech, he has a neat little side effect, which is he creates smoke behind him when he fires, so sometimes that's the thing you want to do, like, um, if this guy had too much health to kill or something, I could fire in the opposite direction to um, cover him in smoke. And then, so again, I can jump over him in either direction, it'll kill him either way. Do I want to end up this side or that side? Probably want to end up closer to the Earth Mover. The Earth Mover, if you haven't noticed, is just filling in the space, um, and I don't really just think about what it's doing. Um, these holes are useful to push people into, but I didn't have the chance to do that this turn, I don't think. Uh, did I forget something? Oh no, he's gonna do a pulse. I didn't do that right away, because you can undo moves, but you can't undo actions, so sometimes it's good to move everyone into place then before you actually commit. Alright. My only worry, actually, is that I'm blocking two here, so next turn is going to be super easy, because these two are going to die, this one's going to survive, and only one thing's going to spawn, so we're going to have two things to deal with. Great, except that these two spawn points don't go away, they keep trying to spawn for the rest of the fight, and so we'll have a nasty turn the turn after. Alright, so yeah, we've only got two things to deal with. This guy's only on one health, so it's going to be easy to deal with him. Um, it's a shame. I would think I'd love to do is if he, if this guy was all the way down here, he could hit this guy for two damage, and it would push him into this guy. And when one unit is pushed into another, they both take one damage, so it would kill both of them in that case. Um, I can't do that. <laughs> what I can do, Repulse Mech actually could... Hmm. So Repulse Mech could push this guy onto their spawn point. Um... He would actually die from the smoke and he wouldn't end up blocking that spawn, but that's good enough. That would, Just killing him is good enough. Um, that would also free up that square so that Jet Guy could jump over this guy and hurt him for one, smoke him for another one. Wouldn't kill him, but the smoke would prevent his attack, so it wouldn't matter too much. Uh, or this guy could go over here, hit him um, for two and push him back so he won't be hurt, hurting the Earth Mover. Um, and then the Repulse Mech could move him onto the spawn. I like that, but at that point he'd be blocking that, uh, he'd be in that square. So do I want, I don't think it matters about, I was thinking maybe the jet wants to do his thing first because one of the things the jet could do is like stand here and then jump over in this direction, um, but that doesn't matter, he can actually jump laterally once this scorpion's out of the way. So I think I'm going to do that. Hit and push him. This is, you know, postponing my problems. <laughs> um, oh, so he's actually in line to hit that guy now, uh, which I didn't think about. But he attacks. He's number three in the order, and they built the number two, so the beetle number two attacks first. So we still need to do something about the beetle. Um, and I think I will do this. It's just going to kill him straight up. So now this guy's attacking nowhere. He will get to do his attack, but I won't do anything. And then at the end of his turn, he'll die and block a spawn. Three things are going to spawn, but three is fine. And this is, uh, we've got two turns left, so next turn uh, we will have to deal with those three spawns, but any spawns after that don't matter because there's only one turn left. Blocked it and he died, which is super satisfying. And we have three threats to deal with, which is not that great. <laughs> so, actually, this guy, I'm seeing right away, he could go there and hit and push this guy into the smoke, which would both prevent the damage and kill him. Uh, that would leave the space free for this guy to, to smoke that guy. Actually, he probably shouldn't do that because this guy cannot reach this one, so he, maybe he's gonna push this guy out of the way. Um, fuck, actually, nobody can reach this one except him. And even he... Oh, he could go down here and hit him from there. Okay. Oh, this is this is not good. This is why the smoke guys are hard. I don't think there's any way to prevent all this damage. Arguably, this is my fault for splitting my guys up so much. We should have tried to keep them closer together. but um, Or closer to the buildings, at least. But I can't see a way to prevent all of this damage. Because the jet guy can't jump over either of these yet. Because there's... You know, from here he can't jump because this space isn't clear. From here he can't jump because this space isn't clear. And same for vertical directions. Um, 
This guy can push them, but they'll just knock into each other. They'll stay where they are. They'll take one damage, um, which is nice, but doesn't prevent either attack or clear any space for the jet to work. The only one who can um, make that situation resolvable is this guy, who could knock this guy out of the way. Um, but he's also the only one who can prevent this damage. It would be neat if like, him standing here and firing in this direction could work, because that would smoke the guy behind him. Um, but shooting in that direction does not help us. And you can only aim in cardinal directions. Like, there, there, there. So, what am I going to do? The most important thing is to prevent this damage the, to the Earth Mover, because that's an objective in itself. I lose a whole star if that takes any damage. Um, I think I do. I certainly do if it gets destroyed. Um, and I think even just damaging it will, will count against me. Um, the building taking damage is not as bad, because even though that's part of my objective, I've only got to take less than three, and I've taken zero so far, so taking one it does not fail that. Um, but it's not great to be taking damage on your first ever mission. <laughs> So, there really is nowhere he could push that is going to help. And this guy can only smoke jump, and he can't smoke jump from any of these angles. Uh, he can't smoke jump to that thing. I mean, he could jump there, but that doesn't do anything. He's used up his action at that point. Um, I'm pretty sure what we're going to have to do is just let this attack happen. So we use him to knock this guy that way. That actually takes care of him completely. Um, then might be fun smoke comes before any action so he will just die before he gets to attack um, this one could then be pushed in some direction actually it would be good uh, if he goes up here and then he pushes him now they both take one damage actually that's not good because he's going to block the jet from doing his work Since it's the last turn, we could afford to take a bit of mech damage, so I might do... I'm going to do that. That's taking care of that guy. And then I can do two damage to him with the smoke. Um, and just for kicks, I can finish him off because um, I jump over him. And now the plane is the other side of him, and so I can push him. And he's going to crash into the plane. They're both going to take damage, but I don't care because it's the last turn. So taking one damage on the on the plane is not a big deal. And now both these guys will die, and we'll get the XP for that. And XP helps us level up. But we're probably going to take a grid damage. There's a 15% chance we won't because that's what grid defense does. Um, but we probably will. Resisted! Holy shit! <laughs> wow, we got lucky there. Yeah, so that's why I'm not good with the smoke mechs. <laughs> I get into situations like that, where the jet can't do his work, and other other units have to help him out, and then it becomes almost a liability. Mind you, I mean, I'm taking on these two-star things, anything that gives you two stars is, is amongst the hardest. If it gives you two stars and, and a power as well, that's, I think, the hardest. Um, or sometimes they give you reactor cores, which are what we want for upgrades. So we can't upgrade anyone yet. Um, we could... You can change pilots around. My other two pilots don't do anything yet, they're just sort of anonymous, generic guys. This is the uh, one I started with, and he gives me armor. I think that's a good place for him right now to be in the jet, because the jet is always in the thick of things. It's very fragile, and so having armor helps. So I think I'll do the Suncatcher Array next. Um, ultimately, I'm going to do this one and that one are the most important, so I'll probably end up doing this one to get there. Uh, I don't think it matters too much. What's the objective there? Oh, don't kill the Volatile Vec. Okay, that's a tricky one. <laughs> that's a, an enemy's attacking you and you're not allowed to attack it. Maybe we'll do that first just because it's um, it is kind of entertaining. <laughs> a lot of people hate this mission type. So, I'm going to position my units to block these buildings from being attacked. Um, I can't really block all of those. The coal plant's the most important one. How far can these guys move? Oh, well, not that far. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I want to block these two 
I think it's best to do um, this guy kind of wants to be at the back actually they don't really I mean they, they look like arti artillery but there's no reason they can't be in the thick of things um, could block that tile but actually it looks like no one can get there anyway um, and I will block this one maybe I'll put him here and then the repulse mech can go over here um, and that's good because I want him close to the water because he can push people in in fact he could even be the one who goes there let's try that I'm really fuzzy on deployment <laughs> I put a bit of thought into it but I don't really know how to um, figure it out ah okay would have been a lot better to have the jet there because the jet is armoured and in that case I could just leave this guy alone it's still okay because I can just have him pulse back um, yeah, arguably this is better actually because um, this way I can um, I still get to use my jet. My jet can do some damage. Worst thing to do would be to push this guy into the sea because <laughs> I could have protect him. Um, he explodes on death, uh, which is you know almost irrelevant because it's your objective to keep him alive anyway, so you don't want him to die. Uh, all right, this looks pretty easy because my jet can kill one of these and the artillery can kill the other. Um, if I wanted I could block one of these spawns but I actually don't because like I say blocking spawns just delays the issue and that's okay towards the end of the fight because you might be able to delay it all the way to the end and then they never spawn. Um, but early on it just you're making trouble for yourself really. Um, so the only thing I don't love about that is I'm leaving myself quite far from all the important stuff but I think it's better because if I I could use the jet to take on this guy but then I've got to use the artillery to take on this one and that involves moving him all the way down there because he can't reach this far in this direction so he'd have to go down there and I don't really want him that far down he seems kind of out of it at that point so jet mech he is quite far from the action but he can move quite far uh, this guy can't move as far so it's better to keep him around and then we just straight up kill this one and all this guy's got to do is just push to get himself out of trouble Volatile back actually has a decent amount of health so we can afford to hit him a few times you don't get penalized for that I think that's why it doesn't say protect the Volatile Vec it just says don't let him die like Oh shit, oh, so we've got an armor scion now. Usually pretty bad, but um, in this case it's protecting the volatile vec as well, and we don't want to hurt them, so might not be the worst thing. The tricky part here is... Oh, something kind of interesting, actually. If the pulse guy goes here, he can push both these guys out of the way in one shot, which is pretty cool. Um, pushes him into the smoke, which is nice. It'll take some damage. Uh, saves this guy. Pushes the Volatile Vex so that he'll attack the Scion. The Scion won't die from that, uh, but it can't protect itself. Its, its armor doesn't apply to itself, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we'd only need to do one more damage to that thing, and then it would die that turn as well. And this guy would be free... We might just shoot it, actually. I'm pretty sure this is going to be worthwhile. Uh, the only question is like, I don't think the jet can do anything. Might not need to. The jet could just block something. Right now the jet could go over and fly over this guy, smoke him, but that's not really useful because he won't take damage from the attack because of the armor scion, and he'll be smoked. He'll be smoked anyway if we push this other guy back, and we're pretty sure I want to push this volatile back in that direction. So, yeah, I'm right. The, the, you know what? The, the jet can't directly attack anyone, but he can still do his smoke. He could just create a patch of smoke there, and then the, the coal plant is in less danger in general. Um, or he could sit on one of these and block the spawn, but he will take damage from that. Even though he's armored, he takes damage from, from spawning. Uh, armor only protects you against attack damage. got to really resist the temptation to push him into the sea. <laughs> um, if I want to kill this guy, I can do it. Um, I'm pretty sure if I just attack this direction, it's going to push him into the, the buildings and 
hurt one. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. Um, I can push him this direction and it'll hurt the Volatile Vec, but to be honest, one damage is not too bad at this point. Um, he could attack this one, but he'll lose one. He'll only do one damage instead of two because the armor guy. The armor guy is going to be an issue in general. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. There isn't... Uh, oh shit, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, no. Undo move. He can go down here. Oh, why doesn't he just do this? Then he kills it and he doesn't hurt the Volatile Vec. The Volatile Vec himself will only do one damage, so he won't kill the armor guy by himself. That's pretty neat. And then I think I will just have this guy create smoke there. Um, it's a shame we can't take this guy out because, oh, in fact, in fact, I need to think about this. We're going to have three enemies spawn and one already there. He'll take one damage, but he won't die. So maybe I do want to block a spawn. It might be better. Just to keep things under control. Because, yeah, that'll be four enemies plus the Volatile Vec. That's danger zone. We could create more smoke, but I don't think it really helps us here. Because enemies don't hang around here. They spawn here, then they move on their turn. So I think that's it. Jet's only on one health now, but he is armoured, so he's not going to die from attacks. In fact, <laughs> this is interesting. So he can just sit there. Alright, uh, let's focus on these guys first. Um, what does armor do again? <laughs> Remind me how armor works. It's one. Oh, it tells you he gains armor, but doesn't tell you what armor does. Uh, oh, here we go. Natural armor. Weapon damage to this unit is reduced by one. So that means if two different things are attacking him, doing one damage each, they're both going to do zero, right? He's going to do zero. He's going to do zero. So he's going to take no damage from either of these attacks. Uh, he is still blocking a tile, so he will take damage from that, but I could spend his turn repairing himself, and then it won't, he'll be back up to two, and then he'll go back down to one. Um, that's kind of cool. So there's only two attacks we really need to worry about. Um, and Repulse Mech could push this guy out of the way, or could this guy... He can't shoot him directly, because he'll push him into the building, and that'll hurt the building. Um, he could stand here and smoke him, firing in the other direction. But, is that good? Not really. One thing I'm, I really want to do is, uh, this guy can actually just push this guy into the sea. So if he's free to do that, that's good. But he's not really, because we need to deal with the Volatile Vec. Yeah, this is quite tricky. <laughs> because, what can... What can we do to the Volatile Vec that isn't going to... We've only got this turn and one more afterwards, so we can afford to hurt the Volatile Vec if we need to. So we could just hit him for two damage and knock him back. Um, but if I do that, I don't know how I deal with this guy. I could push this guy first, but then I'm knocking the Volatile Vec into him so it doesn't push him back, ultimately, and it will hurt him even more. Uh, but this guy can jump over... That would be a bad idea, because then he takes damage from spawn and dies. Um, him just sitting there and repairing is totally viable. He can just do that. So we've got two units to deal with these two problems. That sounds like it should be doable. And yet, I'm not seeing a great solution. This guy... He can push there, but he's going to push that guy into the building. If he smokes from there then, uh, oh, okay, he could smoke the Volatile Vec from here. That's one thing he could do. And then that would still leave space for this guy to push that guy in the other direction. It's going to give us a chaotic next turn, but that does prevent all the damage. I mean, one thing I could consider, but I never do consider, is just take the damage um, and focus on killing things so that next turn will be easier. Because I could... Um, use the repulse mech to push this guy into the sea. I could then use the jet to um, kill that one. Um, I can't see his move range, but I'm pretty sure he could just jump over in that direction. 
One, two, three, four. Yeah, he could. So that would kill two things with two units. And this guy would be free to prevent one of these two damages by smoking the Vec. I'm talking myself into this. <laughs> I kill two things. In that scenario, I've killed two things... I've smoked one, and the, the last one just gets to do their damage and is unaffected. Um, that leaves us with two units still alive, and two units will spawn, so we'll have four. If I instead focus on preventing all damage, which I can do, uh, everything here is still alive. And uh, I think I still block one spawn. So that's four things alive and one thing spawns, which is five units. That's weird. Why does the mass work out that way? <laughs> it seems like killing two things should leave me with two less units. But because I don't block anything. I probably could block something. This guy could... No, I can't really. He's got to push this one if we're going to kill things. Maybe I should take the damage. If you're going to block stuff, this is the turn to do it, though. So my plan for these guys was this guy pushes him, and then that guy smokes the Volatile Vec. And this guy just repairs himself and stands there and takes everything. Blocking one spawn. I think the killing option is better. So in the killing option, this guy smokes the Volatile Vec, but we leave that one alone. Um, this guy pushes this guy into the sea. That frees this guy up to go and smoke and ultimately kill that one. I get to push things into the sea, which just always feels good. Um, probably should have tested that this works first, but I'm pretty sure it will. And now this guy could jump over in that direction, but actually he can also do it this direction, which I think is better. Or he can even go behind him and land on there, but I don't want to do that because he'll die. <laughs> like I say, he takes damage from blocking spawns, even with his armor. Alright, that kills two things. One thing spawns. Two things spawns, sorry. Um, yeah, we didn't get as lucky with that. This mission rewards us with some power, so that will make up for the one we just lost, as long as we can handle this turn. And this turn we've got two things attacking us, which is actually good, because I can avoid that just by moving. Um, I can kill that guy with this guy. The only issue is, who the fuck is going to save him? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, this guy has poor movement. If he's free, he'll be able to go one, two, three, four. Not enough. Uh, shit. I think we're going to take damage again. He can smoke the Volatile Vec, but no one else can deal with this thing. I'm just too far from everything. I keep separating my guys. The trouble is, like, I understand that's a priority. Keep you guys close to the things you want to protect. But, if it's a choice between, like, keeping close to the things that you want to protect, and in doing so, fail to protect them, let them take damage, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good trade-off. Like, when I move them away, it's because I need to prevent some damage. Okay, this guy can't move until someone frees him. This guy can free him just fine. Uh... But even when he's free, he won't be able to reach either of these two. So again, this guy's the only one who can actually do any work. And he could smoke the Voltovec, or he could kill this one. Obviously, I prefer killing. Um, get some XP for it. That guy could just stay where he is. One, two, three, four... If that guy moves, actually, this guy can also kill that one and get some XP. I think we're going to have to take another hit. Just can't see any way to deal with both these threats. 
even if that's the only thing we do. Neither of these two guys can get there. And so, I think I move this guy. I'm going to have him kill that one. This guy gets kind of a free kill there, and he'll just push this guy back, I think. Yeah, that's the best I can do. The Volatile Vec will attack. Might have to focus on some good repair stuff. The way I play is generally the, the secondary objectives are primary. <laughs> it's just at all costs I will try and do those. Um, if I... Oh, I've never done the Renfield Bombs one. Um, I'm actually going to do the Terraformer one though because I seem to recall this is reasonably easy just because the Terraformer um, is kind of a weapon that you can use as well. So the Terraformer is not trying to make the desert into grass, it's actually trying to make the grass back into desert. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know what the story is there. Um, now, Jet are on the front lines because he's armoured. This guy might as well go behind him. Let me see their movement ranges again. They can get to this one and I can't stop them. Oh, they can actually get a word to this. So I should think about that. Um, push mech is not going to be that useful on this mission, but... Ah, a time pod. This is where it gets interesting. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, this is this is fine. Uh, two things are attacking the Earth Mover. Right. Now, my main two priorities are get the time pod and obviously save the Earth Mover, but uh, the first thing I've got to think about is th every turn the Earth Mover can kill like six squares worth of stuff. And in this case, sure looks good to just kill that thing, right? That deals with an enemy. Uh, he needs to fire, he has to fire in all four directions during this fight, so um, he might as well do the one that benefits him right now. Then this guy can avoid damage just by moving out of the way, which is great. Um, two priorities are obviously we're going to prevent damage to the terraformer, but uh, get the time pod this turn because this is a nice easy turn, so it's uh, we want to get it before things get crazy and then if the time pod gets damaged, we lose it. Um, this thing is actually like a sort of a conical cone type thing, and on the screen where you collect it, it's got a better picture of it. Whenever I see it here, even though I know it's a conical, like, solid thing, I always see it as an empty bucket. <laughs> um, so, the question is, can I pick it up and kill both these things? The jet can kill this thing. Obviously, this guy can. But this guy can possibly... Ooh... The repulsor mech could go here and push this guy out of the way. When he does so, you know what? I think it's a situation where the jet could do more damage than the artillery. Because this guy goes here. He pushes this guy that way. Then the jet is going to jump over him. The jet does one damage, puts him in electric smoke, which will do one damage. And by doing damage to that tire, it's going to set fire to the forest. The forest will set fire to the scorpion. The scorpion will take one damage from the fire. So that's three damage total and he'll die, right? I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, and I kind of think rocket guys should stay where they are when they fire. Got the time pod already. This guy is jumping into the attack range, but because he's going to smoke him, it's going to prevent the attack anyway. So he did one damage. Oh, tile's not on fire. Why isn't the tile on fire? We did damage. Maybe smoke puts out fire? Oh well, it's not the end of the world. It's probably still the best thing I could have done. Does smoke prevent fire? Because <laughs> that is not how the saying goes, for reference. <laughs> the saying isn't, when there's smoke, there's no fire. <laughs> Okay, uh, first thing to think about is Terraformer. 
Terraformer, once again, has an enemy in sights, so I think you should do that. You shouldn't do it right now, because my unit's there. Oh, look at this! Look at this. Um, one thing I might be able to do is put this guy over here, push the Hornet into there, then do the Terraformer thing, and it'll kill them both. That would be sweet. Um, that leaves this guy high and dry, but actually the jet can free him, and then he will be able to free to kill this thing. Perhaps. We might need to check. Can he... He'd have to do it from there. Um, yeah, I think this is solid. I'm going to move him to position first. So this guy's going to... Oh... Uh, <laughs> we got an order of operations problem here. Because if the jet... So, Repulsive Mech can go here and push these both. Um, the problem is it's going to damage him by pushing the, the Scorpion into him. That said, it will kill the Scorpion, which actually leaves the jet free to do whatever he wants. I don't think the jet's going to have anything to do, particularly... Um, I'm taking one damage to that guy. Oh no! Uh, this is fine. I'm going to do it because. Excuse me. Uh, push them both. Pushing buildings is fine, by the way. You can't push things into buildings safely, but you can push buildings themselves. They just don't move. Uh, they use the Earth Mover to kill both these things. Sorry, the Terraformer. And that's another of its four directions done. And now, this guy can kill the, the Scion from anywhere. But actually, so can the jet mech, because the Scion is not protecting itself. And if I use the jet mech to do it, then this guy doesn't have anything to do for his turn, so he can spend it repairing himself, so that one damage he took doesn't matter. Uh, and I want to do it from this side, because then that'll leave me closer to the... leaves me actually protecting a building as I come this way. Which is neat. So the smoke's going to finish him off. He's not going to do anything. Um, he actually might want to move one square closer just so that, that building's completely protected. I don't know how that compares to... Like, it seems back there, it's less likely. Fewer enemies will have the movement range to get there. So that's... Because they also have to go round him, which is good. Um, scary red crosshair for a heal spell. <laughs> Alright, that's everything. That went well. Actually achieved everything with no losses. And only two enemies to deal with. This goes a little bit far from the action, um, but <laughs> guess which direction the terraform is going to kill this time? Uh, we are going to have nothing to do. <laughs> terraform is going to kill everything. Um, I might even... There's only one turn left. We could block... I'm tempted to block one of these spawns because um, we're not delaying the inevitable because next turn spawns will be cancelled. Um, if you can confidently take on three things, it's good to do so because you get experience for it. But next turn we need to fire the terraform in this direction. So we'll have no freedom over which direction we fire it in. Uh, so we probably can't lean on it for help as much. Um, and in order to clear this area, we're going we're gonna to move these guys. Uh, or this guy at least. Yeah, I'm changing my mind about this. Do I really want to block a spawn? get more experience if I don't, but it risks risks taking grid damage. I think it's not worth it for like 2 XP or 3 XP. XP is not the most important thing by any means. So I'm moving this guy. We're not going to clear this one this turn, but it's just good to have him out of the way already. Um, killing things... If a unit kills something, the, that unit gets all of the experience. Um, if they die through some other means, then... Um, everyone shares the experience. So you don't lose any, it just gets... It's actually kind of better in some ways, it gets more evenly distributed. If you're always directly killing, then the, the units that are good at that, like this rocket mech, um, tend to get all the experience and the other ones don't get enough. And the jet leveled up. And then these guys... He could stay protecting that, or he could move down here. Oh no, he doesn't want to move down there because we want to leave that area clear. So even if an enemy goes there, we kind of want them to, because we get to kill them at the same time as preventing damage. So I think that's it. We just don't do anything else. No one's damaged. They can't repair. 
The jet's going to be damaged soon, but <laughs> not yet. Okay, so that one's just going to die in the terraforming process. Might as well do that now. And then, for the rest of them, um, anyone... I've got my choice of, of who kills this guy. And I'm looking at his experience bars. This guy's really close to leveling up, so I think it might be worth having him do it. Uh, just to get whatever benefit we're going to get earlier. And that worked. And that's it. Nothing else to attack. Nothing else to do. I think I just end my turn. You know what? This is totally OCD, but I can have this guy repair himself. It doesn't matter at all, because you get repaired for free at the end of the mission. But it's just nice to, like, leave combat all <laughs> repaired. So, two promotions and a time bot. We've got a lot of stuff to do with. It's only had a reactor core in it. That's they always have a reactor core in them. Sometimes they also have like a pilot or a weapon in them. Um, but reactor core is still good. Uh, three grid defense. That's literally the worst thing you can get. <laughs> it's good. It, like it helps if you do take damage. But I would love rather have any other ability than that because everything else is more useful. Plus two mech HP is very good. Um, and so we want to think about who's aware now. So this goes in the rocket mech. Uh, so actually these two mechs both have three base health the jet does not, it has two base health uh, so I could put the plus two mech HP guy in the jet to give it four health, but actually armoured is better than having four health because armoured is like having one extra health for every time you take damage, which is you know potentially more than twice and you don't have to repair it or anything um you know, maybe I'm wrong about that, actually. How often do I take more than two damage? Take damage more than twice? Like, I I did have a situation back there where I, it was potentially advantageous to take damage twice, but it was only twice. It wasn't more than twice. Uh, so even in that situation, having plus two mech HP would be just as good as armoured. And if you only take it once, it's better. Because there's damage you can't avoid, like blocking spawns and bump damage. So maybe I should switch them around. I think I'm going to do that. So now the rocket one is armoured. Does that make sense? Maybe I don't want to do that, actually. Maybe I want this guy to be armoured. It's actually not bad to switch these guys around, uh, because, as you can see, the pulse mech... The guy who's in the pulse mech thing is not... Oh, sorry. Sophia, who was in the pulse mech, has not levelled up at all. Okay, so now our jet has four health, everything else has three, and the pulse mech is armoured. I've got one reactor core to spend, and I can spend that increasing the movement range. Uh, this thing, giving this thing one more range is real, real good. I'd love to do that, but I can't afford it yet. Um, but what I could do is give him one more move. He's already pretty fast, and he can uh, move over water, and he can move past enemies because um, he's flying but giving him one more just gets him into the action more often I could give this guy one more um, or he could shield himself but he's got armoured now so that's not important um, none of the other weapon upgrades cost one the only one I could get is shield self and I think I should invest it in this guy because I want points in him anyway after you've installed a reactor, um, you I can spend it however I like, and then later I can change my mind and just move over here instead. Um, I can't take it out of this mech and put it in a different mech, but I, within one mech you can move it around however you want. So I think that's what I want to do. Five moves and flying is great, and that makes up I hope for the fact that he can't. He has to be in a very particular place to do anything. Okay, let's do the other two-star one. Um, you don't get to do all of the areas. At some point, uh, you get interrupted. So I think this is the last one I'll, I'll get to do before the boss. And it's defend the Renfield bombs. I've never done this before. Okay. So, this guy now has 4 health and 5 move. 
the fact they have five move actually kind of means I should probably um, put them somewhere. I can afford to put them far from the battle. Uh, I would kind of like to have. I'm just going to put them there for now. Um, this guy. I think this guy should go there. And I think this guy should go there because he blocks a building, a double building. I think everything does one damage at this point, so blocking a double building is no better than blocking a, a single building. Um, but having him close to the water is good because if anything's ever close to the water, he can just. In fact, yeah, if someone goes there, he'll be in a good spot to just nudge them into the sea, which is the best thing to do. I think that's best. And this guy being behind the others doesn't matter too much because he can move through them and he can move really far. He could block this building, but... Let's look at the enemy movement. Oh, he can't go anywhere. Neither can he. Is that true? Oh, just because I'm blocking. Um, yeah, this, this is fine. Haha, <laughs> exactly what I hoped would happen happened, which is he's right next to there, so this guy will just be able to push him into the sea. Um, this guy, artillery could just kill him, um, and after this guy pushes, this one's going to be over here, and between these two, as long as we kill the armor one first, it doesn't matter which person kills which. So I should think about where I want my units to end up. And for this guy to kill that one, he can stay where he is. For this one to kill this one, he'll need to... He's going to end up either here or here. Because he's got to go from here or here to jump. That's quite far from the action, but he is quite fast. If I had this one... Let's do the, the repulse thing, because I'm sure of that. Into the fucking sea. So, for this guy to hit that one, he'd go up there. Which is not a crazy place to be. And for this guy to kill this one, he could go down here and jump over this direction. Um, I think that's better. I think he's going to do that. Let's not do that one first. Oh shit, no, we can't do it that way around. Because if the jet kills this thing, he won't do it till the end of the turn, because the smoke only happens after we've finished. And if this thing's still alive when we attack this thing, uh, we'll only do one damage to it and it won't die. So it has to be this guy to hit this guy. And then this guy, he could. I, I think he's, it's better to go this direction, isn't it? That leads me closer to these bombs. Cancels his attack, and we'll smoke him as well. You can actually upgrade the smoke damage, because uh, it's a passive thing that one of your units has, so you can just put some points into it and make it do two damage instead, which is pretty cool. Alright, um, two things that can do damage. Uh, annoying, I don't think I can kill this guy in one turn. Because from there or there, I'm too close to shooting. You have to be one square away at least to shoot a rocket. I can fire in the opposite direction and smoke him, but that only does one damage. Um, this guy can't get close enough. This guy is trivial to deal with. Um, you know, I bet I can push these bombs around. So I could push the bombs next to each other to um, make it so that enemies can't get between them. That one being there actually is really good. Because it lets me push people into the sea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I could push them around. I don't really have a strong plan for why that's good. Let's go to a block, but I don't think that's worth it. So I think I do just smoke this guy. No one else can really help. Um, I'll stay this side, so I'm not too far from the action. And... Smoke Cancels the attack. Does one damage, which is decent. For this guy, he could end up there, or he could end up there. Uh, or he could end up there. I don't think it matters too much. I think I'll do it this way, because um, 
this guy can go there, and that's good in some way. I don't know. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, that puts him really in the thick of things, and in theory blocks a potential attack point. And he's not going to do anything. I don't want him to block a spawn, because... Do I want him to block a spawn? Because this guy's going to survive, and three things are going to spawn. Maybe we want only two things to spawn. Yeah, that's probably better than anything else he can do. We've only got to block it one more turn, and then it's kind of gone. Aha. Okay, well, all three of those need dealing with. Um, let's see what the order is. Yeah, it's not favourable. I was hoping I could push this guy into attacking that guy first. Which you can do that sometimes, but the order's got to be in your favour. Uh, I may want to push him anyway. Oh, you know what? There are only two spawns. That's odd. Given that I blocked one last turn, I would have expected more. Anyway, this guy can stop that guy, or that guy, or that guy. My jet is very useful. Um, this guy actually can kill him, because he can go this side and then push him into the smoke. And <laughs> funnily enough... Oh, can he... Oh, he almost can kill that one, but he can't quite. And he can't really kill this one, because he's made, put so much smoke around for himself that he doesn't have... And I could shoot him from this direction, but it would push him into the buildings, and that would do damage. So I could just smoke this guy again, although actually, no, I can't, because I'd have to fire in a different direction. Hmm. Rocket mech, suddenly not that useful. If I use Jet to deal with this one, I can actually use him to deal with that. And then what... How does this guy... How is this guy useful? He's not, because he can't hit that one without damaging the bomb. So this guy can't even prevent this guy, this person's damage. It's actually a shame that smoke guys aren't immune to smoke. If they're immune to smoke, it'd be so much easier. I should check that they haven't like changed that. <laughs> no, deals damage to enemy units. Doesn't deal damage to us, but it does prevent us from firing. Uh, these two are attacking the objective, so I pretty much have to deal with them. Uh, this one is not, but it's a real shame if I can't. Stop him. If this guy was there... Oh, you know what? If this guy pushes the bomb, that cancels two attacks. And then this guy can kill this one. And, in fact, if that is out of the way, this guy can kill this one. We've still got one enemy left over, but we prevent all damage. Huh. Oh, there is a third spawn. He's sitting on it. I think that makes sense. And do I want to push it towards the edge of the map? I think I do. The alternative is I could go here and push it in this direction. Um, that seems like it gives the enemy more ways to attack it. So I think I'm going to push it in this direction. I see why they added this bomb objective, because it's the only one where you can move the objective around, which is, makes it much more interesting. So, this guy, unfortunately, unless, no, it's got to be him who's, who prevents this damage, and then this guy can just hit this one. I'll move him forwards as well, because he needs more room to, to breathe. Uh, so three things are going to spawn, and we didn't kill this guy. That's not great. But we'll deal with that when it get to it. Maybe I can save the bomb by pushing it into the sea. <laughs> I don't think so, though. Okay, four things. Just four things. Just four simple things. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. This fucking squad, man. <laughs> it's not easy. Oh, oh this is so annoying. I oh, know. I was going to say, like, if I could go there and push both these at once, that would be great, but actually this would just push him in towards another building. 
really, really want some kind of situation where I can kill two birds with one stone. But I don't see it. I can push this guy into the smoke. That's pretty good. Once he's in the smoke... This guy could hit him and also not... No, that's no good. <laughs> this guy's probably going to want to like go up here and hit that guy that way. Um, and then this guy can take out either of those, but he can't take out both. So one of them's going to do damage. And I sort of want it to be... I feel like I should kill this one. Actually, there's another thing to think about. Um, if this guy pushed this guy that way... Does that help me at all? No. A thing that would be cool is if both of my... solutions... If my solution involved killing more things, basically. So if this guy went here and killed that one, and he killed that one, that's two kills. Then we've got both these problems to deal with, um, and we can only deal with one of them. But that's still the same, that's still just as good. Uh, oh, except you're going to push the bomb into the sea by doing that. Let me go here and just see what that... There's a little explosion symbol there, I don't... <laughs> I'm guessing that that's bad. Um, I think it just means explode on death. But... So this guy can't solve this problem. This problem is, is one that needs uh, some special attention. Oh yeah, he can. He can move the bomb. But he would have to do that. So he could go here, push the bomb there, then this guy goes there. He'll take damage, but that doesn't actually matter. Um, and hits that one. And this guy kills that one, and we take one damage, but we get all the kills that we can get. I think there's no reason not to do that. I'll come to him from the opposite angle, just not that it matters, because there's no, there's no other turn to take, but... Um, Yeah, that's the best we can do. Our grid defense is 21. I know that one of them got grid defense. Did they both get grid defense? Maybe that happened during this match. Alright, probably take a damage there. Yep. Not doing so good on the grid. Need to look at some... some grid repairing stuff. In fact, we're going into the boss fight with this, which is not good. Oh yeah, they got the grid defense during that match. So again, I got the worst possible upgrade. But still, got to do the boss. What boss is it? Firefly. I don't think that's an especially bad one. Wish we had another power core so we could get like range on this guy. Christ, a boss, and we cannot take three damage. If we take three damage, the whole game's over. I may well just die here. <laughs> Might just be the end of my run. I am not good with these guys. The starting squad, every unit does uh, damage and pushes, and two of the units do two damage. Um, so uh, that makes them just very versatile. It's just If you need to push something, you've always got a way to push it. If you need to deal damage, you've always got a way to deal damage. Um, whereas Smoke's delayed damage is not so useful. Seems like I should put two units there so nothing can get through this way, and then maybe one unit here. What's the movement range on these guys? These guys can move really, really far, but only to these two, so blocking them is good. Um, this guy can't move very far, but he can't. He is ranged, so uh, I should think about that. Having both my guys on this side means it's going to be harder for them to reach the boss, and actually the first thing I want to do is just, like, slaughter the boss. <laughs> like, usually you just want to do a lot of damage to the boss as fast as possible. Um, 
which would support putting like one guy there and one guy there, and then maybe just one there. Yeah. So maybe like, maybe that and that, and then this guy there. That way he prevents. Is that the pattern of where the enemies can move? Surely not. Yes, I think it is. No, it's not. The enemies can't move there. It's where he can move? Yeah, I suppose so. It's that weird pattern on the, the deploy area. I guess they're trying to show that it's movable space and it's deploy area, so they make it that smaller square. It always confuses me. Um, yeah, I think that's the best we can do. Having this guy separated is not. Having this guy far from the boss is not so bad because he's not that good at fighting the boss. Okay, so that that paid off. Two of the attacks. Well, well, well. No, it didn't. No, we're fucked. <laughs> no, we're just completely fucked. Um, two of the attacks are against our units, which is a good thing, because that's less of a big deal. In fact, that one wouldn't even take damage. Um, oh, Jesus, this is a fucking disaster. Just immediately a disaster. Because this guy's blocked off from getting to that one, so he can not He can push him in that direction, but doesn't help. He can do something to this guy, but doesn't help. Uh, this guy's in a corner... So this guy is already completely useless against the boss. Um, and this guy could shoot him, but uh, we have to burn his damage somehow. Because if it, like, if this guy gets out of the way, he hits the corporate tower, which is an objective. If he stays in the way, he dies, which is a bit of a high cost to pay. Um, so this guy pretty much has to use his smoke ability on him, which is low damage, doesn't move him, so no one else can attack him either. We're not going to kill the boss. Since this guy can't do anything useful, uh, he'll probably just kill this one. Um, and yeah, I just don't know what this guy does at all. He's just a waste of space. <laughs> he could push this one, and that would enable this guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> he really isn't useful. Best thing he could do, he could go over here and push this guy into the mountain, so he takes one damage. Because this guy can get there, but that, that's not useful. Because it's not more important to kill this one than to kill this one. And we have to use this guy's smoke ability. Um, tell you what, is that sand? It is. I might go from this angle so that we, we keep this guy close to the boss. Um, and because this is sand, I'm thinking about... If I stand here... And then I hit this. The push doesn't doesn't hurt because I'm not pushing anything. And it creates dust right in front of the corporate HQ, so that's less tiles for the enemy to, to stand in for the melee attacks. I can't undo the move now, but if I could, I'd probably block one of these spawns because we. This is. Eh, maybe I wouldn't. Alright, that's the best I can do. It's not great. The number of enemies is, is fairly controllable. Oh Christ, we've got an armor guy now. Alright, but at least... At least this guy can jump the boss this time. Which is important. Um, that guy's not doing anything. That guy's attacking a building and can easily be pushed into, um, into that. If this guy can kill the Scion, and he can... We're kind of in business. And this guy can even go that side and jump him like this. Oh. Oh. No. I want this guy to kill this guy. But if he stands there to do it, he's blocking the jet from jumping. If the jet jumps first, then he does one less damage to the boss, which is bad. But I can't see a way around it. There's no other place that he can kill the armor from. If he doesn't kill the armor this turn, he's in trouble. It's a good kill. 
It's nice to have that thing dead, and this smoke is quite neat that that's going to finish that guy off. The fact that he pushed him last turn actually did come into play here. I'm worried about this boss though, we've only got two more turns to kill it, and he's got four health, five health. He's out in the open now though, so we can keep smoking him. And we've got one building attack to deal with, but this guy's webbed, so he's it's going to be very hard. Um, he has four health. So if this guy smoked him and this guy hit him, he would die this turn. That's good, but we can't... If we do that, we can't prevent that building damage. How can we prevent this building damage? If this guy pushes his attacker into the smoke, this guy can go around there, I think. Um, and then jump this guy. And then we do. We actually do two damage pushing. Uh, two damage and push him into the smoke. Which will do another damage for three. And the next turn we're going to actually do one damage to him. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then we prevent all building damage this turn. But we don't get any damn kills. Like everything would still be alive and two more things spawn. Whereas if we kill the boss. We take some building damage. We still get to hurt this guy. Hmm. It's only one damage, but at some point I've got to stop saying that because <laughs> I've only got three health. You know, if this guy went there, he could hit this, do two damage to it, prevent the damage, and smoke the boss. And then this guy pushes, and this guy can jump the boss still. And we end up doing three damage to the boss. No, only two, because we smoke him twice, but it doesn't count double. So... Two damage to the boss, and we prevent all damage. No, that's not better. That's not better than what I was planning, because what I was planning was um, we deal three damage to the boss. This guy will deal two damage to this guy when he jumps over him. Yeah, I think we just do that. It does worry me, but... I should check, by the way, that this guy can do this. Yeah, he can. He can even come at it from the other angle, which is cool. You might want to do that, because I'm... Leaves him closer to the action. And then this one just does this. Two damage. Pushes him into the smoke. Actually creates some more smoke, which I think is good in that area. Um, like, because now the boss can't stand there and shoot this. He can stand there and shoot this. Oh god, there's three enemies and two more are going to spawn. We're going to have five enemies plus the boss next turn. Good fucking luck. Well, we can kill the boss. These two are not attacking. That's good. These two are attacking the same thing. Which is not really useful to me. Um, oh, they're attacking him, and I don't care. Alright. I see... ways to kill the boss and prevent all but one building damage. Is there a way to kill the boss and prevent all damage? Uh... This guy can't really do anything. He could save himself, but that doesn't help. This guy could save him, but then it's uh, it doesn't really help. Uh, how much movement does he have? One, two, three, four. He wouldn't be able to get to there. If he could get to there, it'd be really neat, because he could save both with one move, but he can't. Um, so, Jet Mech could save either of these, or he could kill the boss. Um, this guy... That's good, there's not a lot of ways to move, but if we kill the boss, then that doesn't... he'll be freed. Um, if we kill the boss, he can move one, two, three... Uh, one, two, three... He won't be able to get to this guy. 
the best he could do is go here and smoke that one and hit that one yeah I think that's all oh no I'm not going to create smoke there am I no okay I think it's a case if this guy goes over here kills the boss then this guy will go to here and smoke that one and hit that one if he could go further back, then he could um, uh, kill that one and smoke that one, but there's smoke there. And then we'll take one grid damage, because I think we have to... Not ideal. This guy might as well push this guy back, it doesn't really matter either way, he won't take any damage. And he can't kill it. And that's it, we, we survive. Hey, resisted! <laughs> I love, like, for pure random chance, I much prefer positive chances than negative chances. Like, I don't like weapon jamming in Far Cry 2, because it's a rare chance of something bad happening. Um, but a rare chance of something good happening is always appreciated. Because with rare chances, you always get in the mindset of assuming they won't happen, right? Um, you know, when uh, if you have a 90% shot in XCOM, you assume you're going to hit. Uh, you don't take that shot thinking, oh, I'm going to miss, unless you've played a lot of XCOM, in which case <laughs> you maybe have gotten to that mindset. Um, and so, because unexpected things are more intense, uh, affect your emotions more intensely, um, it's better to have rare chances of good things than rare chances of bad things, because then an unexpected treat is great. Or as an unexpected um, malfunction is, or miss, is super annoying. Oh yeah, I got every single secondary objective. This is why I treat secondary objectives as just absolutely mandatory. Like, um, is because if you get all of them, not only do you get all those points to spend, you also get a bonus thing. And in this case, okay. I could <laughs> give my jet a Taurus cannon. That's pretty extreme. Um, and that's just, yeah, that's a really good thing, actually. It's one damage by default, but it can do three. Uh, it could eventually do, yeah, it could eventually do three. Um, and it pushes. So that's like, if there's two enemies next to each other, instead of uh, being stuck because I can't jump over them, I can push him into each other. That's pretty cool. This guy, mech can act twice if it does not move. That can be amazing with certain abilities, um, but requires two power. We have zero power right now. Um, or I could take a grid repair. Trouble is, I'm about to go to a shop, and it really depends what's in the shop. If the shop offers some great weapons, then I don't need this, and I should go for the grid repair. Um, but if this is a good weapon for the jet, which is the arguably um, my weakest unit. No, the Pulse Mech is the weakest unit, but um, the Jet just has this very situational thing. It's either that or that. I'm definitely not going for the pilot. I'm kind of tempted to go for grid power. This thing, I can sell it, but I think I'll only be able to sell it for one. You know, if I get to the shop and realize I don't need it. Um, it only takes one power. When that boss was stuck in the corner, this would let me do two damage instead of zero. That's quite a big deal. Also gives him push. Right now he has no push. I'm going to go for the torch cannon. Then we see the shop and we find out what I could have got instead. Oh, oh, that's a swapper? Yeah. It's called a teleporter, but it's a swapper. Um, I love the swapper. It's a default. Um, it's part of the default loadout for one of the other mechs, one of the other squads. Um, and it's amazing. That on the Repulse Mech would be great. It's free by default as well. Oh my god, we're definitely getting that. Shock Cannon. Hits two tiles pushing in opposite directions. That's pretty good. It's more expensive than the, the Taurus Cannon to install. Um, that thing freezes a bunch of stuff. That's cool. Uh, very, very versatile. Because freezing an enemy is good, because it can't act. Freezing a building is good, because it protects it. Freezing a friend, actually not that good. <laughs> um... 
but you only get to use it once per battle and it costs two power. We're going to be short on power for, for a long time. Um, I c I'll be able to get two reactor cores this time, but no more, and I desperately need reactor cores. Because um, I think I have to get this. My pulse mech is bad at the moment, <laughs> and that would make him good. What's that? One move, they start their turn adjacent to each other. That's not super good. So I might buy one grid power, because I'm going to spend two on this, then buy th two of those for three each. I've got nine to spend in total. Um, I could sell that Taurus Cannon for one. Oh! No. If I buy the Swapper, I'm down to seven. So there's no way I can buy three reactors then. Uh, I need a reactor core to power that, or to power the range upgrade for his jump. Um, and if the swapper is free, so that doesn't need anything at all, which is great. But I might put one into it to increase its range. Wait, does the... That can shield friendly ship, so for two... Oh, this is... Huh. If I can give him two points, he can shield buildings, and that's a huge deal. There are so many situations where you can't get to the enemy, or you can't knock the enemy out of the way. But if you can shield the building... You're, you're golden. Shielding itself is, is not that important because um, mech damage is rarely my problem. So he's already putting points into him. If I was going to put two reactor cores into him, it wouldn't be into the teleporter, it would be into his shield other. And I can't do that if I also want to install the Taurus cannon or upgrade the jet's range, and I do. So maybe I just buy three reactor cores, give the jet the Taurus cannon, and give that guy shield buildings, and I pass up the teleporter. I really like the teleporter though. The teleporter can be amazing. Because he can already push, and with the teleporter he can effectively pull, like if he... Oh, hmm. That's actually not that useful because he's not flying. The mech that normally has this is a flying mech, so you can hover over water, then swap with an enemy, and it push they end up in the water and you go back on land. Uh, my mech can walk in water, but he can't attack from water, so we wouldn't be able to use that in this way. So maybe that's not so good. You know what? Okay, this is nuts, but you can fit... This is a science class weapon, but you can fit it to any mech, uh, and if it's the wrong class, you'd have to pay one more power. But this thing is free, <laughs> so I would only have to pay one power to fit this into my jet. And, you know, my jet's problem is you can't get things... He needs space, but if he can swap with things, he doesn't need space. He can just get next to them and then switch out. That's probably better than the Taurus Cannon. But by buying it, I lose the ability to get three of these. Even if I sell the Taurus Cannon, I still can't get three. I could sell a pilot. <laughs> Pilots are not that useful. <laughs> If you, you can still operate a mech without a pilot, but then you don't level up anymore. Um, until you do put a pilot in there. Uh, and the, these generic pilots are pretty bad. Um, man. A swap teleporter in a jet. Because he is flying. That's why I thought of it. He could fly over water and do that. That's so fucking cool. But then the Taurus Cannon is useless to me, and... Uh, I buy that. Oh, you know what? This guy already has one extra reactor. So that could be used to power the teleporter. Then I buy two reactor cores and I get shield friendly for this guy. Um, and then I, s I probably sell this and spend the remaining two rep on grid power. I'm going to do that. I'm not convinced it's the absolute best thing to do, but this idea is exciting me too much. Yep, I got a jet with a teleporter in it. <laughs> and then... Actually, there's two things I could do here. I could either... Um, sell my Taurus Cannon, or I could even put my Taurus Cannon in there and have it instead of the <laughs> jet smoke thing. <laughs> like, smoke is, is what this squad's supposed to be about. Um, but... Uh, I've Like I say, I struggle with them. I've not had a lot of success with this squad compared to others. Um, 
And so if I did that, I could eventually... In fact, I could just straight away depower this, give this guy, like, probably more move range. So he has more move range. This guy becomes basically a tank that can also swap with things. <laughs> Which is kind of mad. Um, the upgrade potential on this is way better than the, the smoke thing. Smoke thing can do more damage or it can get longer range. But even when it's two tiles, there's still a lot of situations where that's no use to you. Like, you know, if something's attacking your building and you can get behind it but you can't get to the sides of it, the only way you can deal with that, even if it's only one building and there's no mountains behind it or anything, is you jump over both and you hurt both, you end up damaging the building. The disadvantage of the Taurus Cannon is you always push them away from you, and if there's a building behind them, that's bad. Honestly, I think this is better. And then, oh my god, if we sell that, we can get an extra power core, I think. Can we? So I sell these two to make up for the two I spent on the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm turning it into a non-smoke squad. It's no longer a smoke squad. Um, they're just going to have regular weapons. This is completely mad, but... That's what I'm doing. And I don't buy any... Um, I don't buy any grid power. I just spend it all on reactor cores, which is fucking risky, but I'm doing it. Seems like I'm doing it. So this guy can now shield. And we actually have one power left over. Um. Oh, so he could upgrade his damage. Oh my god. He could have three damage. That's insane. <laughs> this is insane. There's no way that isn't better than the smoke approach. Or I could give this guy one more range, which is uh, pretty neat. Three damage or one more range on this guy. This guy lost his extra move, uh, but I think the teleporter kind of makes up for that. I think three damage is just that's too good to pass up. That's a game changer. Like So many units have three health, that being able to kill them in one hit is just huge. Okay, I think I'm done. I think I'm ready to go on to the next island, but that will be the next video.